Hello class, this is uh, Professor Kraus, and I am going to be uh, leading our time together this second session of the fall 2024, where we are going to have the privilege of working together to learn more about developing relevant expository messages. Uh, I, let me tell you um, a little bit about myself, introduce myself, welcome you to the course, and then we uh, will walk through the syllabus in this uh, introduction sort of um, video. Uh, but uh, I am 42 years old and I am uh, been married to Mandy for 19 years now and I have four kids ranging from 16 to 10. I uh, live in King, North Carolina and I pastor right down the road in Germantown, North Carolina, a little uh, small size church uh, in, in rural North Carolina, Germantown Baptist Church. Uh, I've been teaching at Carolina University for uh, four years now, uh, starting back in uh, fall of 2020. This is the first time I have been able to teach this course. I'm excited, a little bit nervous too, uh, about preaching it. Uh, I mean, about teaching this course. Um, but uh, on the side, I, I love to read. I like to write about preaching and pastoral ministry and missions. Uh, I went to school uh, at uh, Southeastern Seminary where I got my undergrad and my MDiv and PhD in uh, applied theology and preaching. And um, for fun, I like to do a, a lot of trail running. So uh, four or five times a week, I'm right by our, our house is Pilot Mountain, and so I'm up running around the mountain and up the mountain and things like that. I like doing that for fun, and and love spending time with the family, watching the kids play sports, playing board games, and and things like that. But um, I do I, I enjoy teaching, and I hope that comes through uh, in in everything in in every lecture. That I think this is a great privilege, and I and I hope that. This course is is helpful. Whether you are a preacher, pastor, or aspiring to be, I hope that this course, um, even if we do at times talk about some of the same things that we already know, that it's encouraging and maybe it'll sharpen us a little bit. I know it will sharpen me in, in, in reading through these books and being able to talk about them with you. So um, here are here's my info. Um, I do respond best to uh, email, but if there are any emergencies or you just need to really talk about something outside of school or maybe even school related that email just won't do, then please feel free to text me or call me. Uh, my office hours per se, Monday, that's right after one of my other courses that I'm teaching this session, but I can be available you know, about any time. I'm pretty flexible between pastoring and and, and teaching, I have um, I can you know mess around with my schedule a lot. Uh, the course description. So just so we kind of know what I am kind of pushing here in this course, what we're going to be focusing on. This course bridges the gap between biblical exposition, biblical exposition and relevant homiletical applications. So one of the main things we're going to be talking about is how can we make sure in our preaching that we are applying the passage. We are taught to recognize the, the relevant biblical principles in a given passage and how persuasively to apply the principles to contemporary life situations. Emphasis is placed on evangelism and on developing spiritual maturity in the office in, in the audience. Um, you know, the emphasis on place on evangelism is a little different than what you might be thinking, but um, these course descriptions are given to us as professors and said, hey, this is what you're doing. But I will promise you this, that I will um, be sure to help us to think deeply about how preaching is missional and uh, preaching is able to equip our people for the work of evangelism, making disciples, and spiritual growth. Um, so there's the delivery and methods, uh, objectives. This is what we are working towards together. Um, ex being able to explain the characteristics of expository preaching. There are so many books on expository preaching, so many blog articles. We're just going to kind of get to the, the core, the center of it. What exactly is expository preaching? What is it not? Why is it helpful? Is it mandatory? Those sorts of things. Two, we are going to be able to interpret 
and preach passages regardless of its biblical genre. We're going to be able to apply those same passages regardless of the biblical genre in relevant ways to our audience. We're going to be able to develop sermons that faithfully emphasize Christ and the mission of the church. And we are going to be able to preach in all of our sermons with the aim of encouraging, teaching, equipping, and building up our congregation. Now, we have nine books. And you might be thinking, goodness gracious, this is crazy. But uh, one of the requirements for DMIN courses is approximately 2,000 pages of reading. And as I scoured my library that I have here at the, the house and um, bought some additional books and, and things like that, these are the books that I think are exceptional for different reasons, even if we don't agree with every single point of them, and they um, don't overlap. So there, you are not going to be reading the same main idea over and over and over in these books. Some of these books you may have already read, um, and others you may have not. If there is a book that you've read, and you've read it four or five times already, and you would like to replace it for the sake of um, the course, just to keep you more involved and stuff, then please reach out to me and let me know what it is. Um, especially if there, you know there's, there's, you can grab one of the books um, from down here um, in your bibliography. There's a lot of extra books, uh, many of which you've probably never read. And um, yeah, so that's perfectly acceptable. But let me talk really briefly about these books. So first, Preaching to a... Um, to a post-everything world. Uh, many people would say that we're way past the postmodernism, but I think that it still lingers in, in, our, in the way we think, in the way the world thinks about whether or not you can know truth in those sorts of main ideas when it comes to preaching. And so um, Zach Eswine does a uh, great, uh, great um, job of of taking the, the task of preaching and applying it to a world that may not want anything to do with preaching um, or how we can uh, kind of get to the heart of um, what someone's thinking, people where they are at um, in, their, in their journey in life. And so there are some um, really, really great points in here. The subtitle, Crafting Biblical Sermons That Connect With Our Culture, which is kind of what this course is trying to do. Number two, we got Tim Keller, um, preaching, communicating faith in an age of skepticism. We live in a world where people are skeptic, even believers showing up, wondering how certain things are relevant. So he, this is an, except, an exceptional book. Um, everything about it, I, I, I love this book. Um, it's emphasis on preaching Christ preaching the gospel, reaching people, understanding the culture. Um, we're going to have some great discussions with this one. Um, this is kind of like the preaching manual that we have for this course. In a sense, this is the one, uh, the Christ-centered expositor, a field guide for word-driven disciple makers. So the great thing about uh, Dr. Marita's book is it focuses on Christ it focuses on the Word and what the Word is and how to keep it at the center of our sermons, but it also um, focuses on how to make disciples. So we're, we're getting towards that. This is the aim of preaching. Uh, this, this meets the requirements of being able to develop sermons. The second half of the book is about studying the text, finding the themes, outlines, things like that. So this will be kind of the book that gets to the the ins and outs of how to develop an expository sermon. Um, number four, uh, the, beauty, the, the Beauty and Power of Biblical Exposition. This is a newer book. Um, it's one that I absolutely love because it walks through all of the different genres um, and shows us the different genres, why they're in the Bible, uh, how they can help us to understand the big picture of the Bible, and how we can preach them. So if you've ever struggled with preaching the law or preaching Proverbs, they walk through step-by-step step very practical ways to do that. It's a book I've already used before, but I think um, it, it, it's, it's so good and so helpful and, and simple that you will enjoy it. Uh, one of the best books on 
applying the sermon, Daniel Overdorf's applying the sermon. Uh, it kind of bridges the gap between studying God's Word and applying God's Word. I think this will be a helpful, even if you just take two or three um, uh, takeaways from the book, it's, it's worth it because a lot of us struggle when it comes to applying sermons and doing it in ways that are relevant. This book will help us. The supremacy of God in preaching Just bringing down the glory of God, the holiness of God, the beauty of God in our sermons. A very thin book, but if you've never read it, it's very good. Uh, The passion-driven sermon. um, And um, just for example, let me me show you. uh, um, This is trying to help us see what God's Word is really about. Um... In the, in the sense of uh, what God is trying to do in giving us His Word, and then how we can tap into that um, as shepherds of God's people. How can we shepherd our people through um, our sermons? Uh, how can we shoot for their hearts when we are preaching God's Word? Um, another good one. Now, this is the old one of the book, uh, of the group, John Stott's Between Two Worlds. He argues uh, very, very persuasively, not something that he needs to convince us of, but that we are between two worlds. We're between the biblical world and our own world. And we've got to know what's in God's Word and be able to preach it to a new world and a world that is changing all the time. And then maybe a book you've never um, heard. This is more of for pastoring, but it does touch on throughout the whole book, preaching, teaching God's Word. Hearers and doers, a pastor's guide to making disciples through scripture and doctrine. If we as preachers are preaching the Word week after week, we are hoping to make disciples, maturing disciples, equipping disciples. This book is amazing, and I'm hoping it's one you've never read because I'm excited to go through it with you. So those are the books that we are going to be studying, reading, talking about throughout this seven-week course. Now, what are the course requirements and assignments? Well, number one, you are going to have weekly discussion posts. Um, Based on our reading and our lectures, I'm going to pull out a very, very deeper, practical-type question based on preaching. And you are going to write five to six hundred words, which is about a page, um, in a discussion post. You're going to post that by Thursday, and then you're going to respond to two other students' um, post. Now, let me encourage you um, to do to do more than an undergrad or even an MDF student would do with discussion posts, because we all know how those are handled. Um, you know, it, somebody posts something about God's word is really helpful. And then, you know, for the next hundred words when you're responding that, you say, hey, Stephen, thank you for your post. You are right on. God's word is very helpful. Let me tell you three reasons. You know, all you're doing is regurgitating what they've already written. But here is an opportunity for you to actually read two other students' posts. They're probably going to write something a little bit different than you and then think deeply about it and then write, um, write a little bit about that. Notice... There are no requirements for how long your your interaction has to be. So all I want to see is that you understand what they wrote, and then you are going to agree, disagree, further interact with their post, which is due by Sunday. So that's going to happen each week. Uh, number two, sermon examination report, and there's two parts to this. Part A, you're going to listen to 10 different sermons from 10 different preachers paying a special attention to... Uh, how a sermon, whether or not a sermon was expository, and then how a preacher applies their passage to their congregation. So the main part of our our, our course, expository preaching, relevant application to our audience. Now, part B, you're going to write about it. So this is kind of like your research paper, per se, but I hope it's it's, it's going to be a, a better... Um, I hope you're going to like it more than just sitting down and writing a flat-out research paper. Because after you've listened to these sermons from 10 different preachers, and you have made your little notes about it and stuff like that, you are then going to prepare a 12-page double-spaced report on those sermons. Number one, you're going to give a very concise summary of the sermons. If you take too much space here, you're going to run out of space fast. Because 12 pages... 
goes is going to go quickly when you have ten sermons. Um, number two, and, and this twelve page paper is going to be all of this information together. So you're going to be interweaving different things. You're not going to like write sermon one one page, sermon two second page, that kind of thing. So number section one, a summary of all the different sermons. Number two. Examples of how the preachers applied their passages. So, you know, as you are looking and trying to determine whether they are expository or not, and you're listening to these applications, start taking note different ways they applied their passage to their audience. Number three, key takeaways from their sermons. Maybe it's how they they preached it in an expository way. Maybe it is the illustrations they use. Maybe it is the specific ways they applied it which were really relevant. Maybe it was they didn't do a good job at all. That can be a key takeaway too. So you're going to kind of come up with a couple of key takeaways from some of the sermons. Maybe some of the sermons were, were just good, but not great, and so you don't write as much about them. But maybe there were some standout ones that you interact with a lot. That's, that's perfectly fine. Number four... You are going to then look inside and think to yourself three main ways that assessing these sermons, listening and then assessing them, will be applied to your own preaching. All right? So that this is your like, I, I've listened to these sermons, I've learned some about the way they preach, and this is how it's going to be applied to my own preaching moving forward. Uh, notice here, you got a bibliography of all the sermons, so I can, you know, kind of check up. Um the normal stuff for papers. And that's going to be submitted by Sunday, December 1st. So this is something you can start from the very beginning. And once a week, listen to two or three sermons and then start writing. But again, I feel like this is a maybe a more beneficial um, assignment than just doing a research paper on expository preaching or something. So this will help you actually get in the Word and think critically about it. The third assignment, reading reports, very simple, one-page reading report, single space, just a one-page reading report for every book. Um, What's the main theme? What are its strengths, weaknesses, and relevancy? Don't ever be afraid of... um, Writing weaknesses. Um, I've written a book on pastoral uh, on pastoral ministry, um, and it has weaknesses. Right? I wouldn't take it personal. You know, if if you are interacting with the book's weaknesses, that's different than attacking the writer. And so, don't you know? If there's a book, that some of these books that I mentioned, you know, you might find a, a weakness that they 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 forgot something, they didn't do something. They you know, be willing to engage with that if that's one of the main things you took away from the book. This is due, you know, the last day of class. Um, and then finally, your last assignment are is um, you're going to write two manuscripts, two sermon manuscripts, one from an Old Testament sermon, one for an Old Testament, one for a New Testament sermon, expository sermons, um, where you are going to demonstrate the core principles of expository preaching and how it is relevant to our contemporary world. You are then going to record yourself, you know, you're going to video yourself, maybe this is a a Facebook link or a YouTube link or something, of you preaching one of these sermons and you're going to be graded um, based on the principles, you know, that that we talk about. It's going to be a fair grading of the principles. Um, So this, this grade is going to be put together. You got two manuscripts, one preaching, and that's going to become your grade. That's going to be due, of course, Sunday, the very end. Um, There's not an easy way in our system for you to post um, a link uh, or to submit a link for your preaching. So there's going to be a there's going to be a um, a coursework assignment for sermon manuscripts where you could submit those manuscripts, and then. Um, there's going to be a discussion forum labeled student sermons where you can just post a link. Other people can listen to them. I can listen to them to, to your sermons. Now, um, this must be a new sermon, not something previously written, taught, or preached. And so from between October to December, if you preach one of these sermons like as a part of your preaching, that's great. Um, If you do a Sunday night teaching, so maybe you're preaching, you're like me right now, I'm preaching through Exodus. So I'm not regularly preaching in the New Testament. So you could use a Sunday night or a Wednesday night to teach slash preach on that one of your New Testament sermon if you choose to do that. Or you can just record yourself 
doing an Old Testament sermon that you're already preaching. Um, if you have any questions about that, reach out. But look forward to, to listening to those sermons. Excuse me. Now, um, course schedule. Let's talk about this really, really briefly. You are, you are able to read through these books at your own pace. Number one, it's an online course. Number two, um, you know, I don't want to dictate how you read these. You can kind of go through. Maybe you want to get the bigger ones through first, or maybe there's a certain subject that you're just really excited about. Whatever works for you, just start working through um, those books. Making sure to take notes and stuff, because remember, you're going to have to do a, a reading report based on what you're reading. Um, and um, also, you're going to have to do a, a, a one-page summary of it. But each week, um, I'm going to record multiple lectures for our main subjects. So, for example, me, week one is just looking at what is preaching. What is preaching? What is preaching not? Um, uh, biblical theological study. Um, and what does the Bible tell us about itself and preaching and those sorts of things? And each week, um, you know, you can have different ones. So you can kind of line up even your reading if you want to, to kind of fall in line with these different weeks. But I'm going to record multiple lectures for you to read, to, to listen to and to, um, to understand like the main themes that we're talking about. But what I want to offer to you, because it was so beneficial in the summer, uh, with another DMIN class is I want to do live collaborative lectures. I couldn't think of a different way of describing this, but what this is, this is just a time for us to hop on a Google Meet together to talk about questions. Um, it is not required because this is an online class. I am not allowed to require this, but let me tell you, to me, to in my opinion, this is the most beneficial thing we could possibly do in the course. Because number one, we get to pray with each other. Number two, we get to be encouraged by each other. Number three, we get to talk about some of the deeper things that we may not get to based on the lack of time or those sorts of things. I get to throw out questions for us to all talk about and discuss. I'm not going to be lecturing you at all. It's going to be talking with you. I'm going to be facilitating our discussions. Um, and then we get to learn from each other. We get to go deeper into preaching, different you know, expository preaching, topical preaching, illustrations, applications, you know, all different. Maybe you have questions about some of the books we're reading. And this is going to be able to be done in an environment where we get to do this for each other. Now, week one, I'm going to post a... Um, a quiz slash poll based on what times will work best for you. They're probably going to be later evening. So these are going to be, these are going to last one hour. No more than one hour. One hour, I value your time too much. One hour, we're going to stop it. It's going to be during the night and we are going to be able to do this throughout the course. It doesn't go, it's not for a grade, but if you think this would be beneficial and helpful, then you're going to be able to hop on. So that's what we're going to do, and I, I think it will be a blessing for all of us. Uh, here is your course grading, uh, what it's worth, and here is your grading scale for, your, um, uh, for all your grades. Uh, please communicate with me as early and as often as needed for things. Um, any other questions you have is going to be on here. Uh, and here is a bibliography at the very end for you in case you are looking for another book because you've already read one five times or um, you're just wanting to, to read more after the course. Hopefully that will be helpful. So that is a lot from me to you about this course, but welcome to the course. I'm so excited to, to teach it and also to learn from you. Uh, to read these books with you, and um, I hope you're excited too. If I can help you with anything, pray for you for anything that's going on, please let me know. If not, um, look forward to having these lectures recorded for you. Um, they'll be recorded um, you know, by the end of the week for the following week. So Friday, Saturday, these lectures will be posted. You can watch them, be prepared for the upcoming week. And for our discussion sessions, our live collaborative lectures, hopefully you'll be able to jump in on some of those or all of them in a best case scenario. So God bless. Um, look forward to hopefully getting to see all of you at some point on those online meets. Take care.